This presentation gives a quick overview of how to calculate cost of capital. I'm Pat Obi, Professor of Finance, Purdue University, Calumet. Moving on quickly to the valuation equation right here, we find that cost of capital is the discount rate for finding the value of the firm and is the weighted average cost of capital. That is, it is the weighted average cost of the debt and the equity capital and if the firm also has it preferred stock with which the firm's operations are financed. Now as you can see to maximize the value of the firm which is the goal of the firm we must also seek to minimize the weighted average cost of capital since it is the denominator of the valuation equation. To find the weighted average cost of capital, we first calculate the cost of each capital component. In other words, we'd have to calculate the cost of debt, RD, the cost of common equity, RE, and if, if also necessary, the cost of preferred stock, RP. Now, WD is the debt ratio and WE is the co common equity ratio while WP is the preferred stock ratio. So what we do then is to find the cost of each of these capital components and then average them out based on their ratios within the firm's capital structure. So we move on quickly to sh the calculation of the cost of debts which is the yield to maturity on the firm's bonds. So here's a quick example. Now before we continue though keep in mind to calculate cost of debt we need to know three input variables. First would be the expected cash flows if you invest in the bond and they're going to be the coupon payments and the face value of the bond. Assuming the bond pays coupons semi-annually, which is the case with virtually all bonds, then this bond here with a coupon rate of 10.5%, which translates to annual coupon payment of $105, would be halved so that every six months you'd be receiving $52.50. Phase value is $1,000. This bond has a maturity of 15 years. so semi-annually speaking that's 30 and then finally you need to know the price the current price of this bond which is currently trading at a premium is 1015 anytime a bond price is above a thousand dollars which is a par value then the bond is trading at a premium so with your financial calculator you solve for the cost of debt and I do have my financial calculator here so if I bring it up this is a Texas Instruments BA2 Plus. All right, so you go second clear TVM, second clear work. You'd have to put in 52.5 as your payment, and then you type in $1,000. I'm looking at it right here as your FV, face value, which is also the bond's future value, incidentally. 30 is N, the maturity of the bond, 30 semi annual periods, and then 1015 be sure to impose a negative to it is your PV so you can have a good result. So you then compute I. So this is the rate of return but it's a semi-annual rate. You must double it up so multiply it by 2 to annualize. All final calculations of rates must be expressed on an annualized basis and in this case it comes out to be 10.3 percent which is what you see here. Now though keep in mind that, if I may bring this back up, that the effective cost of debt to a firm is the after-tax cost of debt. Why? Because interest payments on debt are tax deductible. So if this firm's tax rate is 40% as shown, then the after-tax cost of debt, which is what you see here, comes out to be 6.18%. And that's it. Next up, cost of preferred stock. Now, preferred stock is easy to calculate because preferred stock is a perpetuity in that it pays pretty much fixed, uh, fixed uh, dividends indefinitely, in which case cost of preferred stock would be the dividend divided by price. But the price has to be adjusted by the flotation cost, which is how much it'll cost the firm to sell a new issue of preferred stock. So in this example, where the dividend rate is $8 per share and price is 88 and flotation cost 
is equal to 3% of price or $2.64. This solves to be 9.37%. Third would be cost of common equity. Now, it's not quite so tractable to calculate cost of common equity for two reasons. One, because equity is uh, equity has an indefinite maturity, and secondly, and more importantly, dividends paid on a common stock are uncertain. Firms may or may not pay dividends, and even if they choose to pay, um, there is no assurance that they're going to be paying you the same. Um, amounts from period to period. In any event, there are three methods that are most widely used to estimate cost of equity and they are summarized here. The first here is the bond yield plus risk premium approach. All this means is find the firm's yield to maturity on a bond as we have just calculated earlier. Say for example it comes out to be 10 percent and then to that you add a risk premium reflecting the firm's overall business and financial risk say for example 5%. You may say, well, how do you get this 5%? Well, in the United States, for example, uh, the rate of return over and above the rate on bonds ranges from about 3% to 8%. And so the less risky a firm's overall operations um, tends to be, the more you'd, you would incline toward the lower rate of 3% as a risk premium. And the more risky the firm is, then the more you tend towards 8% um, the upper end. So in this example, we used uh, 5%. And so this comes out to give us an estimate of cost of equity to be 15%. So this is more like a heuristic model and works quite well for firms that are unlisted or firms that are being valued in a less um, industrialized uh, um, economy where market data are not quite so easy to obtain. Next is the CAPM, the Capital Asset Pricing Model, which is also simple since you've already learned the uh, CAPM and risk and return. So here, w using the security market line equation, we find the risk-free rate, in this example, 4%, and then the market risk premium, which is defined by this term here. In this example, it's 6%. Now, the stock's risk premium would be equal to the market's risk premium multiplied by the stock's beta. So this comes out to be 12%. The risk premium, in this case, 12%, this, uh, defined by the CAPM, is not the same as the risk premium under, if I go back here, the bond yield plus risk premium method. It's not the same as this risk premium. This one here is heuristic. This one here has the rigor of the CAPM. So this 12% plus 4% gives us an estimate of 16% as the firm's cost of equity. Then the, the challenge here though is obtaining the beta estimate. So, but in financial analysis, one important way that we can obtain the beta estimate is to run a regression of the returns on a stock against the returns on a well-diversified market portfolio, as I show here. So this is a, a spreadsheet of um, historical monthly data for the S&P 500 here and the uh, Foods Company Kellogg's. So with these price uh, data, I calculate their monthly returns using, as you observe up here, the logarithmic form. So I'm going to run a regression, and the slope of the line would be my beta estimate. To run a regression, go to Data, Data Analysis, choose Regression as you see there. OK. Let's clear out what I did earlier so you can completely see how this works out. So I click here. For input Y range, my Y is the stock. So I highlight all the way down, click here for input X range, my X is S&P 500. Highlight all the way down, check labels, click here for output range, and then click right here. While cursor is blinking there, I come down, find a spot on the spreadsheet, click it. When I click it, it registers right here. OK. And that's our beta estimate for this particular stock. It comes out to be approximately 0.43 for the Kellogg stock. Now, you can also find beta estimates in a number of places on the web. For example, 
one of my favorite uh, websites is Morningstar.com. If you go to Morningstar and right here type in K, the stock symbol for Kellogg's, you'll get this market data. And if you scroll down here for market data, you find beta to be 0 0.42 pretty darn close to the calculation we just performed using monthly data as you can see from January of 2009 all the way to July of 2013. So going back to our PowerPoint presentation, a couple other methods for obtaining beta estimates especially if the company isn't publicly listed or if you are seeking to find the beta of a division or a corporate project are the pure play approach and the accounting beta approach. These methods are well described in any standard finance textbook. And this concludes this first section of the presentation.